This is John from Clean Code Cast, and welcome to my YouTube tutorials. All right, everyone. In this video, we are going to cover adding a new container for Postgres database and networking them together. This will allow our KTOR container to be able to communicate with the database container. I will be going over to the exposed documentation and seeing what requirements we need to get Postgres working inside our project. And as a bonus, I will be going over implementing Hikari CP to do connection pooling now that we are connecting to a real database. This is something that you would ideally use in a production-based environment where you're expecting a lot of traffic and a lot of connections to the database. I've linked an article below if you want to read more about, you know, the pros and cons of using connection pooling. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back. So following where we left off, we have our project here. So let's open the Docker Compose YAML file, and we are going to add our new container for Postgres. So at the end of this file, we can go ahead and add a new service, and we'll call this database, and we'll say image, and we're gonna say Postgres latest, and then we need to add the environment variables. So this will set up like the DB, the user, the password, uh, when this image uh, scaffolds itself. So Postgres, we'll say DB equals, and we'll call this KTOR. Oops, missed the dash there. Uh, we'll add it there again, and Postgres, we'll say user equals, and we'll say username, don't forget that dash and Postgres password equals, and we'll just say secret. And on a new line, we're gonna add ports and we're gonna say 5432 colon 5432. And then we'll say expose like we did before to expose the port. So we'll say 5432. The only way to make these communicate with each other is by putting them in some sort of network. So if you think about this one right here, this is in a, in a container. And this one's in a completely different container. So what happens if I say, hey, I wanna connect to localhost, you know, 5432, it's gonna look inside of itself. And there is no database in this container. It's over here in a whole different container. So what we need to do is network them together. So how do we do that? At the end of this file, let's add networks and we're going to name it and we'll call this KTOR network. And then on a new line, we'll say driver and bridge. That's not it. We're not quite done yet. So now we need to attach the networks to both of these containers. So we'll say networks and we'll go tab dash and we'll say KTOR network, whoops. And then we can go ahead and copy that and we'll add it there at the end of the database as well. And one more, just as a precautionary thing is we're gonna say depends on, and we'll say database. So if this container doesn't start, then this one will also fail and that's pretty much it. That covers uh, setting up the compose file. This will spin up the database. It will set these settings by default when it scaffolds it, and it attaches a network here. And we're depending on the database for this. Since in the code base here, we will be connecting to this. It does actually depend on it. Now that we have our container set up, we can go over to Exposed and check out their documentation. So let's go to Database and Data Source, and we can scroll down and we can see Postgres is right here. And you can see the Gradle package we need to include. So let's go ahead and grab that now. And let's go back to the project and inside the build.gradle.kts file, we can find our H2 database, the one we were pulling in before. We can go ahead and comment that out and we can paste what we copied in and we'll change that to implementation. 
and we'll go ahead and save it. Now we can switch back over to the documentation. And if you see, it's saying database connect, here's all the settings. So just for ease, we're going to go ahead and copy that right now. And we'll go back to our project. Let's open up the app.kt file and scroll up to where we have the original connection. We can go ahead and comment that out. Then on a new line, we can paste in what we copied. And this isn't quite sufficient. If you remember, um, we can't connect via localhost. So what do we type in there? Well, if you go back to the Docker Compose YAML file, you can see that I gave the service this name database. So that's what we're going to use. Because they're in the same network, it knows how to connect it. So we'll say database. And then we'll say 5432. And the database name was Ktor. Okay, and that's all we need to do there. And the user was username and the password was secret. Now normally you'd have things like this um, sitting inside some environment file that actually doesn't get committed to a repository. Um, so it stays secure. But for local testing, it's fine to have it here. You just don't want to do this in production. So that's it. It looks like we're ready to start testing. Let's go ahead and make sure we saved that. And we can go back over to our terminal and we can run docker compose up. And we'll want to go dash dash build again just because we've added the new Postgres container. So this will take a few minutes. All right, now that it's started, we can go ahead and go to a new tab. And just as before, we can go docker exec dash t dash i gradle dash app and we can say bash or we can just run the command here gradle w dash t install dist. All right, waiting for changes to happen. Since we've already made them, we don't need to go back to the code and resave a file. We can just go over to our postman and we're going to hit the same endpoint we were just hitting. We're going to click send and we should get the three users back. And there we go. We have three users just like every other time when we just start up the project because we default insert new users each time. And just to show you that this is indeed connected to a database, I'm going to manually insert a new record using my database program. Now, this could be any program that you use. For me, I'm using Table Plus. Um, it's just my personal preference. It's the one I like the most. But if you're on Mac and you use SQL Pro, that's fine too. But here, after connecting to it, you'll see users. And I'm just going to go ahead, for demonstrational purposes, add Mary, who's 44, and I'm going to save it. And then when we go back here to Postman, I'm going to click Send. And you'll see it returned the new entry. That is all there really is to it. We have successfully covered the creation of a new Docker container for a database and networking them together. We have updated the project to use this new connection. So what is next? Well, nothing. That was all there was. But I do have an optional step you can take with me here. I do, I do want to stress that this is something you should consider if going to production with your code base, and that is connection pooling. I have linked an article in the description below that will explain some pros and cons to connection pooling if that's something you're interested in reading. Otherwise, let's get to it. So now we can go back to the browser. And in the exposed documentation under data source where we got our Postgres information, we can scroll down just a little bit and under the MySQL, MariaDB with latest JDBC driver, you can see the Hikari pooling example. So you can see the implementation we'll need for Gradle. We're going to skip this one because we're using Postgres and we already implemented it right here. So we're going to take the Hikari CP one and we'll copy that. Go back to the project and open up the build.gradle.kts file. And because I like to keep things somewhat order, I'm going to go ahead and implement this below the Postgres. Now we can go back to the docs 
and I'm just going to copy all of this and go back to the project inside the app.kt file and above the DB connection, we're going to paste that in. I'll fix the indentation there and we're just going to copy this line and we'll put it here and then we'll copy this driver and we'll put it there. And then the username, secret username and secret. Oh, isn't that a happy coincidence? And the maximum pool size. And then we'll create the data source passing in the config. And we just need to do one more thing and that's to pass the data source inside the connection. Now we still have to import these up at the top. So let's go to the top and add import com zaxer dot Ikari dot star and we can save it. Now, because we added a new package, we can go ahead and stop our container from running and all our processes. And once this is done, we're just going to restart it again. And this will take a, a few minutes like always. And we can go back to our other tab and we can also rerun that last command. And we don't have to wait for that to finish to actually hit our endpoint here in Postman. So as you can see, it's pulled up. It's got a lot of records because it's a persistent database. Every time it reruns, it's inserting those three records in every time. So you end up with this is going to constantly happen. And eventually this is just going to keep growing with the same three over and over and over again because it's persistent. So we can run back here, build successful, and it's just waiting for changes. You scroll back down. And everything looks good. Everything's running good. This concludes our video, and I hope all that made sense to you. So to recap, we added a new Docker container for Postgres. We networked them together and we added an optional step setting up connection pooling using Hikari CP. Now that we have a persistent DB, this is starting to feel like a real application. So in the next video, I will be doing a little cleanup. I hope you like house cleaning. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications when I launch new content. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment letting me know something you would like to see me cover. This could be any tech related topic, not just KTOR or Kotlin. Or you can just leave a comment saying, hey. As always, this is John from Clean Codecast signing off.